On today's episode, we've got an update from Tesla's Gigafactory in Berlin, more news on the latest full self-driving release, upgrades coming to the supercharger network, 4680 battery cell production updates, and big news from Tesla Solar and Powerwall. So let's get going. Let's start off with a quick check-in on our old friend Jörg Steinbach, the Minister of Economic Affairs, Labor and Energy in Brandenburg, Germany. The last time we reported on Giga Berlin, Tesla was still very much caught up in a purgatory of regulation, and Jörg was doing his best to help them through it. Now, in a recent interview, Steinbach is sounding very confident that Tesla are almost through the woods and should be receiving their final approval very soon, with no significant hurdles remaining in their way. Even though environmental groups have tried several times to revoke Tesla's preliminary permits, they have all been defeated in court because they have no real basis to enforce their demands. Steinbach is confident and was quoted saying, from the point of view of the Ministry of Economics, there is no reason for the denial of approval at the moment, provided that no unforeseen events occur during the approval process. Tesla has shown during the application process that everything will be done to remove obstacles to approval. This positive outlook for Tesla comes just after we learn that the German automakers Volkswagen, BMW, and Daimler, who own Mercedes, have been actively conspiring for years to limit the development of green emissions technology, according to the European Commission. Volkswagen is on the hook for a fine of 502 million euros, while BMW will have to pay just 373 million, and Daimler avoided having to pay their 727 million euro fine because they were the ones to snitch on the whole conspiracy in exchange for immunity. Now that we can say for a fact that these three automakers were up to some shady dealings with regards to holding back green technology, could that also strengthen our assumption that this same trio are the puppet masters behind all these so-called environmentalists who have been delaying progress for Tesla? I'm gonna go with probably. A couple of updates have come out since our last report on Tesla's full self-driving software. The subscription-based model is now live for all Tesla owners. This is a feature that we have been anticipating since at least January, maybe even as far back as December. And on July 17th, Tesla quietly introduced a subscribe tab to the upgrade section of the Tesla phone app. So now for a fee of 199 US dollars per month, you can have Tesla's full self-driving package of driver assist features. That is if your car was built after Tesla introduced their hardware 3.0 system that happened in mid 2019. If you don't have the latest computer tech on board, then you will also have to pay $1,500 to have the FSD computer installed in your car. But wait, you might be asking, didn't Tesla tell us back in 2016 that every single one of their cars was built with all of the necessary features for full self-driving already installed? Yes, they absolutely did, five years ago. Things changed. For real though, it makes sense if you think about it for a second. Hardware 2 and 2.5 are obviously good enough for the current public release of FSD, but we know what's coming. We know that what's happening in the beta testing group is light years ahead of what the public is using, and that's going to require a more powerful chip. So I think it's a case of either upgrading your computer now or upgrading it later when the new auto steer on City Street feature rolls out to all users. Either way, it looks like we're going to have to do it. Speaking of the beta testing group, how long until Tesla opens that up to a wider release? Well, Elon is confirming that it won't be happening with the current version 9 that just rolled out. In a tweet, Elon said that wide beta might be coming in version 10, but definitely will happen by version 11. This is good news in my opinion. It's good that Tesla isn't trying to rush this process. They know that there is no competition they need to beat. They just need to deliver an amazing product that works safely. Version 9 is close, but there is still a lot of responsibility on the driver to prevent a disaster from happening. Following Tesla's general upgrade schedule, version 10 is probably three months away and version 11 another three months after that. Elon tweeted that there would be roughly a month between each release, but Elon time. So double that and factor in roughly, I think three month intervals is more realistic. So possibly by this fall, but probably by the end of this year. Let me know in the comments below, are you pulling the trigger on a monthly FSD subscription or not interested right now? 
Elon Musk confirmed that Tesla is upgrading the supercharger network from 250 kilowatts to 300 kilowatts of max capacity in order to enable faster charging. In 2019, when Tesla introduced the V3 supercharger, they upped the power from 150 to 250 kilowatts, which was great. But long before that, Elon had been joking that even 350 was like a child's toy. So we knew that there was more to come. Even with just 250 kilowatts, the Model 3 and Model Y have been able to charge faster than every other vehicle on the road, but the competition is catching up. Hyundai and Porsche are upping their capacity to 350 kilowatts this year, and Electrify America are rolling out new fast charging stations with that amount of power as well. Tesla still holds the advantage of having a much more efficient system than those competitors, so they can still charge fast on lower power. For example, up until 2021, the Model S and Model X could only charge at 150 kilowatts. The Model 3 and Model Y were the only cars able to handle the 250. So it's safe to assume that the new 2021 Model S and X will leapfrog to the front and be able to take the 300 kilowatt output for crazy fast recharge speeds. Tesla haven't disclosed a max charging speed for the new Model S yet, and that's likely because they're waiting on this upgraded charger to see where it tops out at. LG Energy Solutions and Samsung SDI have both reportedly completed the first sample cells of Tesla's 4680 battery as they eye a big contract for the automaker. Tesla's new 4680 battery cells have the potential to be cheaper, more efficient, and allow for vehicles to either gain a longer range or carry smaller battery packs. Tesla had to develop new manufacturing processes to make the battery cell and deploy those at scale in its own new battery factories being built near Berlin, Shanghai, and Austin. On top of those in-house production plans, Tesla is also partnering with current battery suppliers to deploy their own production of the new 4680 cell. Four of the world's biggest battery suppliers, Panasonic, LG Energy Solutions, CATL, and Samsung have all announced plans to build those 4680 cells for Tesla. Now, a new report from the Korea Herald, a publication based in, you guessed it, Korea, where both LG and Samsung are also based, suggests that both battery manufacturers have completed the first sample cells of Tesla's new battery. A high-ranking industry official told the publication, Samsung SDI and LG Energy Solutions have developed samples of cylindrical 4680 cells and are currently conducting various tests at their facilities to verify their structural integrity. Samsung's timeline to bring the new battery cell to production is unclear, but LG has indicated plans to reach production as soon as 2023, which would be shortly after Tesla's own mass production begins. Tesla's solar division is launching a brand new high-powered solar panel with 420 watts of output. You heard me, 420. Don't think for a second that's a coincidence. Elon's commitment to a bad joke is just baffling at this point. The new panel will be one of the most powerful residential solar options on the market. Just to be clear, this is a regular big solar panel. This doesn't have anything to do with the solar roof tiles. And for Tesla Energy, traditional solar panels still make up the majority of their business. Tesla writes about the panel on their data sheet. The Tesla module is one of the most powerful residential photovoltaic modules available. Our system requires up to 20% fewer modules to achieve the same power as a standard system. The module boasts a high conversion efficiency and a half cell architecture that improves shade tolerance. Speaking of solar roof though, a new video just hit YouTube that shows how well a Tesla's roof tiles hold up to a real world case of extreme weather. Tesla has claimed that the tiles can withstand baseball sized hailstones, but one customer in Texas unfortunately got a real life demonstration. This guy's house got mobbed with hail that ranged in size from a ping pong ball to a baseball. The stones managed to smash his patio, dent his rain gutters, and dent the rook of his RV, but the Tesla solar roof tiles made it through the whole storm with not even a scratch and started working just fine when the sun came up the next morning. We've also got really cool developments happening on the Powerwall storage side of Tesla Energy. The company is moving forward with a virtual power plant model for the state of California that could literally save the state's electricity grid from collapsing this summer under an extreme load. 
The basic idea is that Tesla Powerwall owners in California would be able to opt into this program that would make a portion of the energy stored in their home battery available to their local grid to be used in extreme shortage conditions. Users can opt in via the Tesla mobile app beginning on July 22nd. California's grid is expected to have an exceptionally difficult few months with record high temperatures increasing energy demand on the grid and a significant drought affecting hydro power plants like the Hoover Dam. Tesla tells their users that the extra capacity your Powerwall provides could help avoid or reduce blackouts in a severe emergency. This way, Powerwall can keep the lights on for both you and your community. Tesla will dispatch your Powerwall when the grid is in critical need of additional power, that is, when the least efficient generators would typically come online. It's a really smart play here from Tesla. Sure, your Powerwall could keep your house running in the event of a blackout, but what if your Powerwall working together with others in your community could prevent that blackout from even happening in the first place? Tesla says this network of home storage cells could form the largest distributed battery in the world, consisting of potentially over 50,000 Powerwalls. The Powerwall owner can still set their own backup threshold wherever they want, so the grid will only pull from the cell down to, say, 50% or whatever the person chooses to hold back. That way, even if the blackout still occurs, the power wall will still be able to supply the house. But what do you think? Would you volunteer your home battery power for the greater good? It's a tricky question. Comment down below. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time. Don't forget to sign up for the Tesla Space newsletter to get yourself entered into our Tesla tequila prize draw. You'll get the details when you subscribe. Plus, we deliver all the updates on Tesla, SpaceX, Elon Musk, and Neuralink in a quick, fun, and easy to read package. Link to join is in the description below. It's the teslaspace.com. You can also check out our brand new website while you're over there. Once you sign up, be sure to check your promotions tab to make sure our emails are going to your main inbox. If you wanna to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.